What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and with all the people who whine, complain, and troll on the internet, you would think YouTube would put like a little disclaimer, maybe like right here, that says, these are the opinions based off experiences by the person talking. That's it. Anyways, before we get started, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe. Today, I'm going to talk about, from my opinion and my experiences, why I think the FN Reflex is a much much better handgun than the Sig Sauer P365. And that is why I actually carry an FN Reflex pretty often as I think it's one of the best summertime light carry options out there. But it also has its own flaws as well. Like I said, the Sig P365, great shooting handgun, the Micro 9 that set all this off, right? We wouldn't be talking about that if this was never designed. So I always give the P365 utmost respect um, because it has brought me some of my favorite handguns being the Shield Plus, Hellcat, FN Reflex, that whole sort of thing. Now, if you guys are wondering, because people always ask me about certain parts on firearms, this is an Armory Craft Grip Module. As you can see, awesome, awesome texturing, stippling job. Looks awesome, but feels even better. I don't like the original Sig P365 Grip Modules because there's very little texturing the way I like it. This is dang near perfect. And then also this is the matching base plate from them and you can use code SPN for 5% off. It just goes together really well. You can get a, you know, almost three fingers on this firearm. Two and a half, baby, whatever the case may be. Now, the FN Reflex. We'll start off by comparing them. The FN Reflex is 11 plus one with this base plate. I thought it'd be good to compare them both with the base plates because that's how I would actually carry them and that's how I carry my Reflex. 11 plus one on the right, 10 plus one on the left. Now we can do it without the magazines, just to show that it's clear and safety checked as well. 11 plus 1 on the right, 10 plus 1 on the left. So you can see where FN gets that one round. So I would say they're basically identical when it comes to capacity, right? Because SIG's a little shorter, but it has one less round. Therefore, you can see where FN made up for it. With about the same, but the FN Reflex looks a little bit wider. Barrel length is going to be longer on the FN Reflex. It has a closer barrel length. Um, to like the P365 or the Hellcat Pro, or I should say slide length, right? Anyways, that's what it looks like. So you have a very similar firearm, but the FN Reflex just has a longer slide, longer grip, and is a little bit wider. So a little bigger in every dimension. Another thing you notice when you're holding them like this is the FN Reflex, I don't know if it's just how they're set up right now or how I'm holding them, but the FN Reflex seems lighter. I don't know if it's how, you know, how even they are you know in terms of weight distribution but the fn reflex almost feels lighter i don't know if it is you would have to check that out maybe correct me in the comments for everybody that'd be really helpful actually anyways fn reflex things i like about it the sights i love these sights three dot tritium sights can be sometimes hard to see i get that the rear is not tritium in this but sometimes when they are tritium they just have the white outlines they're a little hard to see so i like the white dot rear sights with the sort of rounded off square and then you have that orange outline front with that tritium front sight, right? Now, one thing I absolutely can't stand about this handgun, even though it sort of looks cool, is the finish. This is from carry. I've shot over 3,000 rounds with this handgun. Not a single issue. Not a single issue with low left. Not a single issue with failures to feed, failures to extract. My handgun runs flawlessly. And I've put it through its paces. I've tested it with many hollow points. And for being such a small micro 9, I have beat this thing up and it's handled everything. I am very impressed with the reflex. Just like I was very impressed with the FN 503, the thing literally took abuse that it shouldn't be taking and just ran. It just did what it, it, it did. But the Cerakote job is absolute terrible, right? The finish is terrible. I don't mind it because the firearm functions. It's about the internals at the end of the day. But it does give it sort of a bad look. But at the same time, it also gives a character and proves, you know, this handgun runs. It does what it's supposed to. Yeah, it's going to look like crap, but it runs. And it runs everything. Awesome handgun. Another thing I want to point out is the recoil and the reflex is not like any other Micro 9. They did a great, uh, I guess the, you know, the equalizer, if you consider that a Micro 9, but they sort of made this for weaker hands or hands with pains or, or arthritis. Everything is relatively easy. They didn't have to call it the EZ model. They just did it, which was actually pretty cool while keeping the firearm reliable. So I thought that was a really awesome, you know, aspect of this handgun. Top of that, you have a rail. And we will get to that trigger in just a second. One thing I don't like is the trigger guard is very small. 
Um, you don't have a lot of room for a gloved finger, and if you live in a cold area, that could potentially be a problem, especially under stress, and especially with how light this hammer-fired trigger pull is, right, which we're going to get into. This is also a hammer-fired Micro 9, one of the only ones, even though there is the CSX and stuff like that, right? Now, texturing is on point. Ergonomics are pretty dang good. The only thing I have to say about the ergonomics is these corners are a little sharp. What I mean by that, they're not necessarily rounded off. There's almost like a little squared off portion on each side of the back that a lot of people have complained about in the comments and you can feel it right here, right? It, you can feel it like almost being, it's hard to explain. It's almost just like a sharp like poking. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't affect me, but a lot of people have complained about that. I notice it, but I just sort of like spin my hand more this way and it sort of keeps it off that edge, if you know what I mean. I spin, you know, my palm swell comes in this way and I get that good purchase and I can get real tight and lock up on this pistol. Everything is clearing the controls and you are ready to shoot. I love the reflex. Now it is a little thin, all micro nines are, but I feel like it does fill the hand a little bit better and maybe that's why they put those pieces there, sort of to, to box off the hand if that makes any sense. It takes a little bit more surface area for your skin on your hand to curl around if that makes any sense to you guys. Awesome texturing on the front, great texturing on the sides. I like how they brought the texturing up there. No memory pads. Um, nothing to remind you to keep that finger off the trigger, which I like to have, but you should already know that. But for new gun owners, I like to see stuff like that for muscle memory and that absolutely ejects the mag. I have a lot of micro nines that struggle to eject the mag. The FN reflex launches that thing, right? Everything locks back and it does work really well to release. Um, I just don't want to drop it because my mic cuts out when I do. Everything functions on this hand. Now, let's check out that trigger, right? See that nice little movement? Crisp, clean, and light. Reset, a little longer, but very clean and crisp. People fail to realize what a defensive trigger should be, right? A defensive trigger should be a trigger that's good enough to shoot accurately with, but also heavy enough to have a defined wall that you can manage your firearm and deal with your firearm under stress with, right? You won't, you might have just dealt with a threat and you don't know if there's others. You, you know, your fingers near the trigger, around the trigger. You want something that, you know, when you are in a fight for your life and have no idea what's going on, that that trigger doesn't accidentally go off and harm someone. So, I like this trigger. I think it's one of the best micro nine triggers out there. And this is my most accurate micro nine. I'm more accurate than the Hellcat and the Shield Plus. And that's why I've put it through its paces and its rounds because this handgun has really, really impressed me. And honestly, for 3,000 rounds and the amount of carry time it has, it doesn't look terrible. Um, my XD subcompact got really bad looking. Um, had to go get some stuff done to it. But this, no problem at all the way it looks. Next up is the SIG P365. Like I said, a very shoot, smooth shooting Micro 9. It's a tad bit smaller than the FN Reflex, but the FN Reflex just shoots like a dream. P365 shoots really well. And I really like this handgun for, you know, my mom, my wife. They really shoot it well, right? But... The thing that about the P365 that I like as well is it's very versatile with the FCU. I don't talk about that as much as I should. I talk about Glocks being versatile, but the SIG P365 is a very versatile platform. Now, the FCU is a genius, genius design, but it also can be a pain in the butt in terms of a crap hit the fan situation and taking apart the FCU and putting it back together and replacing a part. It can be a pain in the butt, but it is a genius design. Self-cleaning, all sorts of stuff. 3 dot night sights, love the tritium sights right out of the box, love that green outline up front. I don't mind SIG sights at all, I just wish the rear had like more of a white outline to it because it can be sort of hard to see, but I don't mind a blacked out rear either, so sort of best of both worlds in this situation. Armory Craft did come out with some stippling, therefore it helps keep that finger out the trigger, fight a little recoil with a little traction, and yeah. Has a rail, not the biggest fan of this rail, but it is what it is. Um, I don't really carry with a lot of lights or anything like that, so not a big deal. Everything functions pretty well on this, except for a couple things, right? Obviously, mag releases just fine. The slide sticks. I think a lot of my P3, I have four P365s. The slide sticks on almost all of them until this point, which is pretty normal. But it's almost like a little, I know it's not super lubricated right now, but you get a little sticking with it. Not a big deal. The other thing I did notice is the ejection pattern runs flawlessly on this one, but it's all over the place. It's hitting me in the face. Um, if you see the video where I shoot 500 rounds through this in one sitting, 500 rounds through the Hellcat, that video is on my channel. Um, I was getting hit in the face with brass all day, 
and it was going to my left, going to my right, dropping right to the ground, going straight up, hit me in the face. I had even two shells collide with each other, which is actually pretty cool to get on video. But it ran flawlessly. So this exact handgun right here ran flawlessly 500 rounds. Now someone pointed out, why does your barrel have so much wear on it from barrel slap and stuff? Well, when you shoot 500 rounds through a, a, a handgun multiple times in one sitting, that that's what you do. You get wear. You know, lubrication wears off. Lubricants wear off. Oil wears off. It gets a little better when it heats up, but over time, especially in cold and stuff like that, um, it wears off. And I really test my handguns, and I shoot a lot of rounds in one sitting. That's just what I do. I test my handguns thoroughly. Smooth shooting handgun, awesome for it in rear serrations. Um, the finish, I'm not the biggest fan of on SIGs, but this SIG finish on this one actually is held up better than the others. I'm not sure why that is. Um, it honestly looks a little better. Even the barrel wear is much, much less minimal. Look at that. That's crazy. But an awesome handgun. This one has over 1,700 rounds now through it. Not a single issue. I do enjoy bringing my SIGs to the range to continue testing them, but I will not carry them. I also know people with 60,000 rounds through their P365s with no issues. 10 plus 1 setup. This one does have a manual safety. You can get one with one, without. There's all sorts of stuff. So many options. Uh, SIG offers it all. Trigger pull. I love the P365 trigger pulls. I know it sort of feels cheap, but they're great triggers, and nobody can deny that. That handgun literally goes nowhere when you pull that trigger. I mean, there is no movement. It is an awesome, awesome trigger. At the end of the day, there are two awesome concealed carry handguns that are very different, but very similar in size. Chances are, if you get one or the other, they're going to be generally reliable for you, perform for you, although I have had major issues with two of my P365s. Just keep that in mind. I recommend the reflex, but it's not for everyone. I know a lot of people have had issues with their reflexes. A lot of people have had issues shooting low left, all sorts of things, but I love mine. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.